Good morning. Wow, I came to the computer and catch up on emails and respond and <laughs> finally looked at the clock and I had only two minutes to go before I started. Of course, I had already done the blurb. I usually do that fairly early on when I arrive at the computer after coming out of meditation. Anyway, today the title is Loving Our Humanity is Essential. We are in the process of changing the world. This is not a violent revolution at all. Quite the opposite. It is being done through love. Many of us are awakening to realize that we are not separate from those we love to hate and criticize. <laughs> we recognize that we are all interconnected, all cut from the same fabric of creation. We realize that we are holographic, each containing the whole. Without that realization, love is merely a word. With it, love becomes the very force of spiritual and alchemical transformation of our humanity. If you cannot feel this yet, you will become aware. We all will. Hmm. It's a workshop weekend, and workshop weekends always have the tendency for me to bring me back to that realization and powerful ways of recognizing the interconnectedness of all life and re recognizing the similarities that we all have, recognizing how much we've been programmed <laughs> to divide life to divide our experience into good and evil, light and dark, men's issues, women's issues, <laughs> spiritual and non-spiritual. <laughs> we have been trained to judge, trained to criticize, and hatred has almost been bred into the human family which is why the human race has been so violent. We have thought for eons of time that we could fix things by killing those or silencing those in some manner that held different viewpoints, that expressed life differently than we chose to express it. And we identified with those that agreed with us, and we called that identification love. <laughs> I should say, we falsely identified that identification as love. So many people in religious cults <laughs> and organizations, and even political and other types of organizations, tend to believe the lie that because they like <laughs> the comfort of having those around them that agree with them, that that is love. And while it is nice to be able to experience those that affirm and validate our points of view, while that does feel good and it is nice, it is not love. Love in a polarized world is much better expressed and it's much more healing to express it as I love everyone and that's not a cliche. As I said in yesterday's talk about my marriages, Spirit has been moving me very, very much to become even more compassionate than I thought I already was. And it's not doing this by increasing my awareness of those that agree with me. 
but by recognizing the cry for love in those that I have more easily sat in judgment of, beginning with my first wife especially, and other people that are in my world that try to control their world by criticism and silencing those that they perceive and label as negative. And I'm realizing that judging those that judge is still judging. <laughs> and I need to let go of that. Spirit is challenging me to take my compassion, to take my loving to a higher level. One that actually has the power, as I said, to transform through an alchemical and spiritual process of awakening, of recognizing that that is, that is still me. That is still part of my divine being because I am part of all that is. I am part of God. It has nothing to do with my point of view. It has to do with reality, the higher reality that all life is connected. Period. End of sentence, end of story, end of arguments. We are all connected. It doesn't matter how it appears. It does not matter how many differences we can find between us and them. What matters for me and what Spirit is telling me and perhaps nurturing and, 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 and trying to get you to see is that they are just denied and unclaimed and unrecognized aspects of my own human experience, my own being that has had all of these experiences throughout many lifetimes, if, you can, if and when you can accept that. That the soul has been on a prodigal son, prodigal daughter journey going into this far country called Earth where duality appears to some to be an enemy when actually it's a gift. When we have polarized and fought wars within ourselves that ended up spilling outside of ourselves into the culture at large. But that's changing and I can feel the changes happening. And I think many others can feel it as well. And if you can't, I'm encouraging you to get quiet and go within your own being. Recognize that everything that you've been given, all of your experiences, no matter how painful, no matter how much you haven't liked them, all of them have been given to you for a purpose to awaken you and me and all of us to love, which is the essential nature, which is the heart of who we are as human beings, as sentient beings. We are here to serve the whole. And when we recognize that, we, we are served by the whole and all things begin to work together because we're not constantly resisting and fighting against that part of ourself that we're not willing to recognize and honor and love. That part of ourself that is the wounded part, that part of ourself that is the denied part, that shadow part that is the not good enough, unacceptable part of ourself. We're unwilling to love it and therefore we create it out there. But the problem is not out there. It's always in here, in me. Which is why Ho'oponopono is so powerful. We recognize that connection with, with those that are hurting, the pain body, the wounded inner child. 
the part of us that hasn't remembered yet who it is and what it is. And what is it? It is always love. It doesn't matter if it's the Hitler or the Pope or the President or the bankers or the saints or the ascended masters or the angels or the demons it doesn't matter because creation has occurred with a with apparent separation but it's only apparent separation because that which created only had itself to work from and itself is himself, herself, God's self, the divine that is in everything, that is in it all. Without the creator, nothing was made that is made. Nothing. And there's one creator, not two that are at war with each other. That is the perception, but it is not the reality. And it's being driven home more and more and more that I am love. And the challenge that I face is to love that which appears opposite, that which appears contradictory, that which appears paradoxical and enigmatic. To love that part of me that is the most difficult to love. Because when I can love that part of me, that part of me changes. It doesn't change because I'm trying to push it away because I'm trying to hide it, because I'm trying to deny it. It changes because I love it and accept it as a gift instead of as a mere problem. When I get a pain in my body, I don't say, oh God, I wonder what's wrong. No, I say, thank you. I need this adjustment. Help me to understand the gift that you're bringing me here. You're, something is changing. Something is happening. I can feel it. Help me to see it with more clarity. Help me to understand it with greater love and greater compassion so that I don't see life as aligned against me, that I begin to see life as my ally, as something that benefits me and benefits all of creation because all of creation serves itself. Loving our humanity is essential, even though we've been taught in our religion that it's a sin, that it's an illusion, that it's this or that other negative quality, it's darkness, it's evil. That's all BS. That's all programming that we need to overcome, and that which overcomes the programming is an all-encompassing love, an unconditional love that embraces the very things it fears, including fear itself. And in embracing fear, it's no longer fear. Fear is transformed into love. Fear can't do that. Fear can only push away. Fear can only make walls of separation. Fear can only put on armor to protect itself. Love needs no protection, for love is all that is, including the fear. They say love and fear cannot happen at the same time. Until they happen at the same time, there will always be polarization in our experience and in our lives, always. Love and fear must come together. Love must marry fear so that fear is no longer afraid. This is transforming our humanity. This is loving our humanity. It's loving the apparent opposites and contradictions. It's loving the paradox. I am the paradox man, bringing you this message that you are love and so am I. And so are those that seem to be opposite and contentious toward us. That contention is merely the illusion fighting for its life. But the illusion becomes the reality when you allow love to t 
teach you new ways of seeing and new habits of interacting. I hope you get this message and I hope I continue to get it myself because this is a message that Spirit is giving us that is very powerful and as I said it's alchemical and, tra and spiritually transformative. It changes us from the inside out. Thank you for listening. Have a beautiful day and namaste.